want to thank you, God, for that prayer. Oh, God, I pray that you got something out of it. Yes. Because he was not only here, but he is here. Yes. And I thank God for you. Amen. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh. My teaching is going to be on one phrase. The scripture is Genesis 29 and 18. Since Jacob loved Rachel. Since Jacob loved Rachel. The thought is the power of your thoughts. Our thoughts can take us in so many directions. Our thoughts can help us. Our thoughts can hurt us. Our thoughts can take us into blissful happiness. But our thoughts are generated by something that's in the core of us. Now that core, if not dealt with, can manifest some unhealthy thoughts. And those unhealthy thoughts can lead to unhealthy behavior. So I want you to remember that. Genesis 29 and 18, since Jacob loved Rachel. Now, we're talking about the power of thoughts. So when I first started reading this, I was like, all right, all right, God, my thoughts are taking me to, ew, sisters are married to the same man. God, ew, he's also their first cousin. So, you know, my, my thoughts were taking me there on the natural, like looking at this story, like, uh, you know, today, we wouldn't be trying to hear it. So okay, know that. Okay, she got him, better have him. I'll get the next one when he comes through town. But he said, no, see, that's the problem. Get my thoughts. See what I want you to see in these scriptures. So I said, okay. He said, your thoughts can manifest blessings. But your thoughts can also make you miss your blessing. Because my thoughts were going somewhere way out left. It would have made me miss the blessing of what he was trying to teach, what he was trying to show us, if I hadn't have been obedient to draw myself back in. So now we look at Jacob's love for Rachel, right? So we know the story. I'm not going to go full into it, but I want you to just think about what our thoughts make us do, and then why do we have those thoughts? Because I want to set us free. I want to set us free from those thoughts that hold us captive. And those thoughts can lead us to so many different things. So a brief synopsis, Jacob you know, went to his kinsmen and he worked for a while and said he wanted to marry Rachel. She, you know, she was a fine young thing. And the father Laban said, okay, all right, you, you can marry her. You're gonna do the whole ceremony, let's do all this thing. You know, they cover their faces. And Jacob went in there and when he went to, you know, do the thing, and pull the veil back, he realized, wait a minute, it was Leah, the older sister. So he had their bamboos. So, okay, all right, I still want Rachel. I said, she is the love of my life, I want her. So he said, okay, I'm willing to work another seven years to get what I want. Okay, I'm willing to do that because she's worth it. Now, mind you, Jacob felt Rachel was worth working another seven years to get her. Once they got married, Rachel didn't feel worthy because she couldn't bear many kids. Now just that one thing, now you would think that's her core, right? She was barren. And this man worked seven years just for me, but I still don't feel worthy. All that love, how, how often does God show us his love and we still feel unworthy? So now Jacob was saying, you know what, I love you. It doesn't matter that you can't bear me any kids. I wanted you. I worked seven years for you. She's depressed. You know how we get because we, we, our thoughts are telling us it's not right. No matter what anybody around us say, our thoughts tell us, nope, it's not good. We're not good. We get depressed. We start trying to figure things out in our head. We start calculating. Meanwhile, while she's going through turmoil, Leah, yeah. rightly so, Leah was going through her own thoughts. Because now, mind you, even though she was the first wife, which gave her a lot of rights. He didn't really want her. So now how would you feel being married to a man that professes his love for your sister? So you, okay, you give me a thought. 
I'm gonna start popping out some kids because he'll surely love me more than her then. Five boys, and we know boys back then were a treasure. Five boys, and she still didn't feel worthy. I'm even gonna taunt her. Nah, nah, you can't have any kids. I don't gave him kids. And it still didn't feel that core. And she didn't even realize that there was a core missing. So it goes back to Rachel saying, okay, she done gave him kids. Now I'm really feeling unworthy. And he's yet saying, but I love you. But I love you. And that's what God said to us. And we, we don't hear it. Because our mind is so plagued with those captive thoughts that say he can't possibly love me. He just feels a pity on me. So what she does is, hmm, just like old Sarah, let me go get my, ser my um, lady servant. You go in there and, and, and have some kids for me. So she go and pop out two boys. Now, Rachel, because that's her base server, I can claim these boys, but they're still not mine. So I have these sons that I can say are mine, but I'm still not worthy. I still don't feel loved. I still don't feel like I am the woman who he needs me to be. He did all this for me, and I'm still not worthy. It's those thoughts, the power of our thoughts. So after all that, God looks upon her with favor and says, I'm going to open up your womb. And she has a son. Jacob loves him. Loves him. Now, I love my wife. I love the son that he bore me. And she still wasn't fulfilled. And we got to understand, when we start having these thoughts, when things start happening, there's a core that we're missing. There's something that we are not dealing with. Because sometimes our thoughts take us so far in that field that we even get, we forget. And we close our mind to what is the core from you feeling like I'm unworthy. So now, Rachel's thinking, I'm praying, I'm doing all this stuff. Then it get real crazy in the household, y'all. Cause they just start going baby for baby. I'm gonna pop out one, you pop out one. I'm gonna give you my maid servant. And it just got crazy and, and, and ungodly because of the thoughts. These women thoughts were driving them crazy. They couldn't even accept God's love because they had been overcome by their thoughts. And their thoughts were generated by feelings of unlove, unworthiness, being unsufficient. Why, why would he love me? And I came to him this way. So we end up doing so much trying to prove something that we never needed to prove. We end up doing so much trying to fill a void that that thing can't fill. So now she thought her void was because she was barren. She had kids and they still going back and forth. So now they just got a house full of kids just running around like crazy and a bunch of unhappy people. Now how many times do we do that? I want women, men don't know, this is what I tell you, I want that man. I, I don't care that he don't mind up God, I don't care that every T is in cross, that I can, we can work together, we'll work with him. I was like, all right, patience, patience. No, this is what I want. My mind's telling me this is what I want. I know that this is what you sent me. And we go and we figure out a way to make it happen. And we're still not happy. Because nothing lines up and nothing is going to do what we wanted to do because we didn't deal with the core. So then we say, what is that core? What was going on with Rachel? And I had to look at it and I said, okay, God, for most of my life when I heard the story of me and Rachel, it was... That's the story of me and Rachel. It was the story of her being married. And I said, but if she still wasn't happy, house full of kids, this man telling her over and over that I love you, like, how many of us wouldn't give for a man to, number one, give up seven years of his life for us, and then constantly tell us how much he cared, and still not embrace it, still not receive it. So I said, okay, what's going on? And God showed me. It goes back to Naaman, her father. This man is saying he loves me. God tells us he loves us. But if I don't know a real natural love, I can't receive this spiritual love. What does that mean? Because I didn't get love from this one, whether it was my father, whether it was my mother, whether it was a family member. There was something on the natural that did not fill that core. So I don't even understand what this love is. God, how can you love me? If that one couldn't love me, how can you love me? And Rachel looked and said, my father tricked the man that loved me. He took away me being the rightful first wife, the main wife. That man, my father, took that away from me. And he was supposed to love me. So she didn't deal with that. That's 
and all of it manifested into I gotta prove myself for him because he, I gotta figure out how to make him love me. And there was no way Jacob could have proved to her because it was her father that she was trying to figure out why didn't you love me enough to let me be the one? Why did you do all this to me? And then God shows it in scripture because when they all try to leave and Jacob says, I have nothing of yours, let me and my wives and my kids leave, they find out that idols are missing. And he's like, no, nobody has an idol. Rachel went and took the father's idols and hid them under her seat, whoever, the donkey, whatever, whatever she was lying on, she hid the idols. And meanwhile, Jacob has said to Laban, whoever you find with your possessions, surely they shall die. Right. Now I want you to get the power of our thoughts. Because she didn't deal with the core of her issue, she went through life trying to prove something to someone who could never validate her. Then because of her thoughts and not dealing with it, unconsciously, she came back at her father by taking his prized possessions and reaped cold on her head. I think it was something. I think you were talking about the coals on the head and our Bible was in Sunday school. She didn't even realize the consequences and how she had killed her own life and spirit because of the thoughts that led from that core issue. How many of us have issues from way back when that we never deal with? We just say, you know what, it's okay, I'm gonna move on. And then our life replicates all those issues in the residence. Yes, but God can heal that. She didn't, She never gave God a chance. She tried to fix it all. And that's what we do, we try to fix it all. We try to clean it up, dust it off, put a little polish on it, dress it up, but never get to the core and deal with it. So David came around and Jacob said, go ahead. Look, because he's sure that he didn't know. He, he was in all honesty. He didn't know. And he went from tent to tent to tent. And when he was getting ready to come to Rachel's tent, she thought, again, I thought, I got to think quick, quick on my feet, quick on my feet. Okay, it's that time of the month, Father. I can't stand up. She had enough of her. So he said, okay, he went by. But when the man of God professed, whoever has it shall die. It was already spoken. It was already decreed. It could not be undone. So when she went into child, into childbirth, she died. And he never got a chance to really experience a full life with her. And all of this goes back to God says, I love you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. John 3, 16. What greater love? Okay, I can't, I can't understand that. That's the world, it's not me. Okay. God's love has been poured into our hearts. Make it personal. God's love has been poured into my heart. Romans 5 and 2 and 5. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. He tells us time and time again, I love you, I love you. I poured it into you. It's around you. It's covering you. It's over you. It's under you. But yet our thoughts, because we don't deal with the core, tells us we're not worthy. Tells us he can't possibly love us. Tells us I need love from over there. I need love from over there. I need love from over there. And then you keep running here, there, and everywhere, and you're never fulfilled. We always wonder, what's missing? Why can't I ever be fulfilled? Why can't I ever get to that place? Because we don't tap into what is the core. And we have to go back and deal with that core. And all you have to do is say, God, help me to see me. Help me to see what's hindering me. Help me to see why I can't receive that you love me. Why can't we see that you want the best for me? Why can't we see that there's nothing I have to do to receive your blessings? That's all he wants. He wants us to say, you know what, God? You love me so much, I'm just going to be a good daughter. I'm just going to stay here and look cute because you said I'm royalty. What I get? You know how we do with our parents. All right, what I get? I did good. I was good at school. What I get? That's our Heavenly Father. He wants to give us his best. But we're too busy thinking of why we don't deserve it. Thinking of how we can make it happen. So tonight, if you take nothing else, find that core and ask God, help me to be released from it. Because guess what, some cores you can't fix. Either people are dead and gone or they're not here. Sometimes you just gotta say, God, help me to forgive myself. 
Help me to forgive them. Help me to release it. I want to receive your full love and know that, you know what, there is nothing like it. Because then when someone else comes by and say, I love you, it's going to be like, all right. Because I don't, I don't have the best love of all. So your love is good, but I'm already smiling. So now you just add it to it. You just put that icing on the cake because my cake is baked. That's what we want tonight. So I just want you guys to, to deal with that and remember, we don't want to be closed on our own head. We don't want to go down a destructive path that sometimes you can't get out of. And sometimes those roads lead to death because we don't deal with that core and we don't get it right so that God's love can rain down and shower down upon us. Amen. Yeah. Yeah.